Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics. So a British Prime Minister reacts coldly to President Putin and decries his aggressive and violent behaviour towards others. Not exactly the stuff of reality these days, only it seemingly is. At the meeting of the G20, Theresa May has been critical of Putin and talked up the need for nations to take necessary climate change measures more seriously. And it was not long ago that she was speaking to the UN to say that more must be done to tackle modern slavery. Now, this is the same Theresa May who has killed far more people in the UK with her callous policies than Russia has with nerve agents. She was also part of a government that removed tax breaks for environmentally friendly ways of generating electricity, such as small scale solar power, side of people's houses, but still allowed tax breaks for the much wealthier fossil fuel sector. Granted, it was David Cameron who was prime minister when this policy was put into place, but she didn't exactly speak out against it or reverse it when she became prime minister herself. She was also the Home Secretary who shed thousands of police jobs, making illegal slavery much more difficult to detect in the UK, as well as promoting more legal means of slavery by allowing the perversion of the gig economy and zero hours contracts to run rampant without satisfactory regulation. So why is Theresa May suddenly champion a load of causes that she expects others to do something about? If she cared about them after all, why didn't she use her time in number 10 to do something? After all, she's only started talking about these things recently, after her forced resignation. Now, I'm not sure about you guys, but I'm wondering if it's just an attempt to rescue her legacy. Her main job as Prime Minister was, of course, to deliver Brexit. That is something that she has failed to do on all levels. She faced an uphill battle from the start, but people putting themselves forward for one of the most challenging roles you can face knows that they can hardly blame others when it all goes to hell. And it's not like it was impossible. She simply relied upon the wrong people to push it through and then realised that she'd burned the bridges to the people who might have helped her. And it's not like she can fall back on, dom on successful domestic policies, is it? She, she claims that she's delivered record low levels of unemployment and a buoyant economy, but she knows that she's fiddled the figures and that anyone who is paying attention can see that it's very far from the truth. Certainly history will give her no such credit. So perhaps she's trying to say that although she didn't do anything to be proud of, that her heart is in the right place and look at what she would have done if that pesky Brexit thing wasn't clogging her in tray. She'd have eradicated slavery, united the world in tackling climate change and challenged Putin to a boxing match and a repeat of Rocky IV. It's rubbish, of course. She is one of the most evil people to have occupied number 10 for some time. A truly heartless person who has oiled the machinery of her vile schemes with the blood of her own people. It reminded me a little bit of George W. Bush. Whilst he was enjoying the lame duck period that all double term presidents seem to experience with the sizeable gap between election and inauguration. Works a bit differently in this country. You know, there's a seamless transition. So after two years of tearing down the US systems for tackling environmental harm, refusing to engage in Kyoto, continuing the narrative that there was debate within the scientific community about climate change when there never has been, he started to soften his stance a little bit. Sure, like any other self-aggrandizing politician, he tried to say that he'd been taking the issue seriously all along and actually tried to help. He started talking about a scheme that the United States would be pursuing with the fruits of those labors to come in the mid twenties. At a time when he was about to leave office, so he was effectively trying to commit his successors to something that he couldn't be bothered to do himself, but to take the applause for doing so. A nice little trick and looks very much like what Theresa May is doing. All you guys, including whoever replaces me next month, should do this, this and this. Yes, I know I didn't do any of those things and on close inspection actually did the opposite, but I totally would have done them if I was still going to be in power in a few years time. To this end, Theresa May has announced billions of pounds in funding for education and decarbonisation. But in a mere few weeks, her successor could cancel it all. I guess her plan is that she says, well, she put it all in place and that it would have stayed in place if she'd have stayed in place. But given that this only happened once her time was up, I'm not sure how dumb you have to be to believe that. So what really is Theresa May's legacy? Her Brexit legacy is obvious, isn't it? Um, though she doesn't, as I say, take full responsibility, she did appoint Davis and Johnson into key positions in order to force them to take responsibility for the Brexit they campaigned for. But of course, they always had the option of running away and still blaming her. She has presided over a country that has mirrored the divisions within her own party and seen the economy of the country being brutally beaten up by the experience. 
She triggered a general election that she refused to campaign properly for, completely forgetting that she actually hates mixing with people. This is a bit of a problem when you're campaigning in a general election as Prime Minister. She came across as aloof and cold and lost what little majority had been left to her. She spent £66 billion on no-deal preparations, most of which have already been shown to be totally ineffective, but also when neither she nor Parliament wants to exit without a deal. She's presided over rolling out new systems across a range of areas which have broken down badly. Universal credit is well known, plunging frightening numbers of British citizens into poverty, and even deaths have been linked directly to that system. Child poverty has skyrocketed, along with food bank use. Food banks are, are not able to supply food to everyone who needs them, so the needs are far greater. So we can't just look at the increase in food bank use and go, oh, that's representative of the increase in poverty. No, it's much worse. An MP has been talking about a case in her constituency where a child walked into the school at the start of the week and fainted from hunger. The last time they'd eaten was their last school meal before the weekend. Indeed, many schools are running extra meals paid for out of the pockets of teachers to try and help out their communities. It's a desperate situation that the Prime Minister could have stopped. But no, she'd rather deny that poverty actually exists in the UK. I mean, you can't accept it and say there's nothing you can do. The idea that one of the wealthiest nations on earth can't feed its own people is nothing short of laughable. So she just denies that the problem even exists. And it's not just that system. You know, there are, there's a computer system rolling out in courts that is just not working. Just again, last week I was uh, looking at tweets of people who were saying that multiple cases in a day have just had to be abandoned completely as the computer system failed. This has been going on for some time now. Cases stacking up. We've got record low numbers of police for, for what's needed and detection rates are now suffering. The police are incapable of detecting the crimes that they should be able to because they do not have enough detectives, they don't have enough police officers. The list could go on, but ultimately, her legacy could come down to this. She has brought famine, poverty and death to her people, but tells them that everything is great. She causes those who are not suffering to be blind to those who are, to hide it all under the carpet and make out that anyone who is saying otherwise is just lying. That's her legacy. So I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe for further content. Until next time, I'll see you later.